And we're at chapter 2, verse 21 of the book of Second Kings. And he went forth unto the spring of the waters, and cast the salt in there, and said, Thus saith the Lord, I have healed these waters. There shall not be from thence any more death or barren land. Notes. The word of God must be cast into the poison spring. There is no other answer. And that's the reason that it is imperative that this great gospel of Jesus Christ be taken to the entirety of the world. Christ alone can heal these broken hearts, and he alone can set the captives truly free. Luke chapter 4, verse 18 through 19. Verse 22. So the waters were healed unto this day according to the saying of Elisha, which he spoke. Notes. It was not a mere temporary, uh, but a permanent uh, thing that benefited the people which Elijah bestowed upon the town. When Christ comes in, there is no more death or barren lands. That's the gist of that message right there. Verse 23. And he went up from thence unto Bethel. And as he was going up by the way, there came from... Uh, there came forth little children out of the city and mocked him and said unto him, Go up, you bald head. Go up, you bald head. Notes. Now these this words, uh, these words, little children, they're probably a very unfortunate translation. The Hebrew word is nayar. It can mean anything up to 40 years old. And as well, the words bald head do not necessarily mean that Elijah had no hair on his head. It could have signified a worthless fellow, but at any rate, it was it was a term of contempt. Verse 24, And he turned back and looked on them and cursed them in the name of the Lord. Notes. Now this is not talking about foul language, but it's talking about placing a curse on them. Scripture. And there came forth two she-bears out of the wood and tore forty and two children of them. Notes. When they insulted the man of God, they in fact were they were insulting the Lord himself. Verse 25. And he went from thence to Mount Carmel, and from thence he returned to Samaria. Chapter 3. Uh, now Jehoram, the son of Ahab, began to reign over Israel in Samaria the eighteenth year of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, and reigned twelve years. And he wrought evil in the sight of the Lord, but not like his father and like his mother. For he put away the image of Baal that his father had made. Nevertheless, he cleaved unto the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, which made Israel to sin. He departed not therefrom. Notes. Jehoram removes the obscene idol erected by his father, but resolutely holds on to the great sin of Jeroboam and that is the worshipping of the golden calf. In the books of uh, Kings, as in the first epistle of John, sin is principally, it principally means the substitution of a God other than the Lord Jesus Christ, and evil means fidelity to that false God and the false saviors. Verse 4. And Misha, king of Moab, was a sheep master, and rendered unto the king of Israel an hundred thousand lambs and an hundred thousand rams with the wool. But it came to pass when Ahab was dead that the king of Moab rebelled against the king of Israel. And king Jehoram went out of Samaria the same time and numbered all Israel. Notes. Uh, this numbering he is actually preparing for war. Verse 7. And he went and sent to Jehoshaphat the king of Judah, saying, The king of Moab has rebelled against me. Will you go with me against Moab to battle? And he said, I will go up. I am as you are, my people as your people, and my horses as your horses. Notes. Now these words were probably a common formula uh, expressive of willingness to enter into the closest possible allegiances. Uh, the incurable insubjection of the natural will, even in a Christian, to the word of the Lord, it's, uh, it, it is actually seen in Jehoshaphat. Despite two severe lessons from God, he for the third time unites with the religious world in a laudable enterprise. The results will be that he will nearly lose his head. Verse 8. 
And he said, Which way shall we go up? And he answered, The way through the wilderness of Edom. Notes. Now, Edom, though under a native king, was a dependency of Judah. You can find that in 1 Kings chapter 22, verse 47. So this would be an easier route for invasion. Verse 9. So the king of Israel went, and the king of Judah, and the king of Edom. And they, and they fetched a compass of seven days' journey, and there was no water for the host and for the cattle that followed them. And the king of Israel said, Alas, that the Lord has called these three kings together to deliver them into the hand of Moab. Notes. <laughs> Even though he is an idol worshiper, Jehoram, he uh, makes the mistake of blaming the Lord for their predicament. Verse 11. But Jehoshaphat said, Is there not here a prophet of the Lord that we may inquire of the Lord by him? And one of the king of Israel's servants answered and said, Here is Elisha, the, the son of Shaphat, which poured water on the hands of Elijah. Notes. Now, had, a, had a Jehoshaphat inquired of such before he came, he would not now be in this particular situation. Well, believers all too often seek the Lord after bad things have happened. It's best to seek him beforehand and for all things. It would save us much trouble. Verse 12. And Jehoshaphat said, The word of the Lord is with him. So the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat and the king of Edom went down to him. In other words, they went down to the prophet Elisha. And Elisha said unto the king of Israel, What have I to do with you? Get thee to the prophets of your father and to the prophets of your mother. And the king of Israel said unto him, No, for the Lord has called these three kings together to deliver them into the hand of Moab. Notes. <laughs> Elisha regards it as incumbent on him to rebuke the monarch from Israel, who, uh, though he had put away the strange image of Baal with his father that his father had made, still he wrought evil in the sight of the Lord, and he cleaved to the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat. Uh, the king of Israel answered wisely. Verse 14. And Elisha said, As the Lord of hosts lives before whom I stand, surely were it not that I regard the presence of Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, I would not look toward you nor see you. Notes. In other words, uh, this states that in effect Jehoram and the king of Edom, they basically owed their life to Jehoshaphat. <laughs> Verse 15. But now bring me a minstrel. And it came to pass, when the minstrel played, that the hand of the Lord came upon him. Notes. Yeah, most probably these were musicians who came along and sang and played the psalms. Uh, music which is touched by the Lord refreshes, heals, and delivers. You can find that in First Samuel chapter 16, verse 23. We'll go ahead and continue. Verse 16. And he who was Elijah said, Thus saith the Lord, Make this valley full of ditches. For thus saith the Lord, You shall not see wind, neither shall you see rain. Yet that valley shall be filled with water, that you may drink both you and your cattle and your beasts. Notes. Uh, there would be no rain, but it would be a distance away, actually out of sight, with the water running down into the valley and thereby filling the ditches. Verse 18. And this is but a light thing in the sight of the Lord. He will deliver the Moabites also into your hand. Notes. God, who is the author of nature, has full control over nature when he so chooses, and it is an easy matter for him to produce at will any natural phenomena. If he wants to produce a tornado, a hurricane, cause a volcano to erupt, cause a star to explode, it's, it's uh, like flipping a light switch on and on for him, because thus is his nature. And we must pick up in chapter 3, verse 19 of the book of Second Kings. Thank you, and God bless.